Hello everybody, welcome back. And if you're new, thanks for coming by. If you didn't already figure it out, my last video was an April Fool's joke. April Fool's! Ha 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 ha. Anyway, my 3070 isn't going anywhere, so don't worry. And honestly, I don't think I'd be lucky enough to land my hands on another one at a good price anytime soon. Plus, I never did anything about the other part of my VRM. So that's what I'm going to do today, and I figured let's do an alternate solution. So let's get into it. Firstly, before we get into the install, I wanted to go over some temp readings I took before installing the first VRM heatsink in my last video. If you haven't watched that, I put a link up in the top right, just in case. Now as you can see, the left side of the VRM was getting to about 135 degrees Fahrenheit, and that was just after about 15 or 20 minutes of gaming. But when I took these temps, I was idle in game, so they definitely were higher while I was playing. However, when I was taking readings on the top side, the temps were much more bearable, staying right around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and really why I didn't do anything about them in the last video. But after reading some of the comments on that video, a couple of you were pointing out I might end up with a fried system if I don't do anything about it. Personally, I think I'd be alright based on my testing, but for all of you, I figured we could try out an alternate solution today. So here's what I bought. A roll of double-sided thermal tape and a set of copper GPU RAM heat sinks. I actually found these from a post on the Dell forum that recommended a similar brand of heat sinks, but those were sold out and these were pretty much identical to what the poster recommended. I'll put a link down below to these exact copper heat sinks, so if you want to buy them, you can get some yourself. Now, let's pull one of these out of the package and just take a closer look at what we got. As you can see, they aren't very large, which is perfect for this application, and as well they have tall, thin fins to help air pass through and take the heat away. Also, since there are only four VRM chips on the top side, we'll only need two of these. So, we'll get those two placed aside and put the other eight away. And as you can see here real quick, I placed the tape flat on the table so I could just stick the VRM heatsink to it and trim it down to size. Plus, this reduces the amount of tape I'm using because I could just cut out that first strip here and then that little extra I'm about to trim off is perfect for the second heatsink. But I'll speed up the footage here so you don't have to watch me do all the trimming. Then once we're ready to install, I'll get back with you. Alright, tape is all applied, it's on to my finger, but we'll ignore that, and we'll get the Alienware open so we can install these heat sinks. Alright, we are ready to stick these to our VRM chips, but first, I'm going to test fit them before removing the plastic on the adhesive, as I just want to double check they fit before sticking them down. Now if you notice, I'm putting the fins in a vertical position rather than horizontal. This is because the case fan to exhaust air is at the top of the case and figured this would provide the best opportunity for airflow to cool these. Since the test fit went well, I'm going ahead and removing the plastic from the adhesive and we'll be sticking the first one to the two VRM chips furthest to the left. I am making sure to apply mild pressure and not too much pressure as if I put too much I will bend those fins and will definitely reduce their cooling capabilities. Also, after applying the pressure, I gave them a quick tug just to ensure they're not going to come off in the middle of gaming and won't hear a random crash inside my case due to them falling off. Now that we got the first heat seat on, we'll get the second one on. This one will be installed to the two chips on the right side. And as the first one, we'll apply mild pressure to it so we don't break those fins. And I gave, gave the first one a little extra push there. Then a few tugs on both of them, just to ensure they're not going to pop off in the middle of gaming, like I said before. These do feel very secure to me, so let's zoom in real quick, just so I can give you all a closer look at these. 
as you can see, I installed both of them in the vertical position to ensure they get a decent amount of airflow, and both are applied to two of the chips each. I could say we're all done here, but we won't know if this is helping or not till I test. So let's get into some gaming, pull off the side panel, and I'll take some more readings with my temperature gun just to see where we're at. Extra, extra long, 30. Three right long, opens 80. All right. Want to jump back in now, as this is about a five-minute stage and didn't want to keep you all. As you can see, the VRM temps are in the low 100s to about 120F. Well, the heat sinks are anyway. But as you can see, all three heat sinks are definitely doing their job, even though we see that the copper heat sinks are showing to be a bit hotter than the chips without them. I honestly expected that the copper would draw a lot more heat from the chips, so I think we should be okay. These temps were taken after about 30 minutes of gameplay, and everything ran really smoothly with no stutters the entire time, so I think these will save me from any potential doom. However, I'm going to slide back into Dirt 2.0, and wrap up the video today. Also, one other quick thing. While I was working on this, I got to thinking, how could I put a second intake fan into the front of my case? Well, I may have figured that out, but I'll save that for another video, so stay tuned. If you have any comments, questions, or just want to see more, you know what to do down below. I thank you for watching, hope you have a great rest of your day, and take care.